Hi there, I'm meteorologist Jason Fraser. Good to be with you for yet another online lesson. And today we'll be talking about lightning, which as you know, is a part of thunder. But as always, I like to get start, we started with a funny joke. So here's today's joke of the day. What did the tornado say to the washing machine? Ready, three, two, one. Want to go for a spin? Get it? <laughs> All right, I personally thought that, that was a really funny one. But uh, so, as always, I love your questions. Feel free to continue to send them my way. You can either email me at jfrazer at wkyc.com or you can feel free to leave me a comment right below this video. So, today we're going to be doing a quick review of thunderstorms and then we're going to be talking a little bit about how lightning forms and the different types of lightning because not all lightning is actually the same. Pretty sure you didn't know that. All right, so for remember we had talked a little bit about the different cloud families, all right? I'm not gonna go specifically into all of the different clouds, but they are all a part of three relatively distinct categories. And they include cumulus, stratus, as well as cirrus. And most thunderstorms are associated with and those cumulus clouds, those are those big puffy looking clouds. Right? And those are the cirrus clouds. They look like the mozzarella cheese sticks that um, I don't know, many of us like to play with, including me. All right, I'm a big, you can probably tell. And then stratus clouds. Yes, we do have thunderstorms that are associated with stratus clouds, but they tend to be few and far between. Most thunderstorms are usually associated so what is a thunderstorm it essentially is a rain shower that you hear thunder and then you see lightning so not all rain showers are thunderstorms but for the most part thunderstorms are accompanied by rain but not always so let's talk a little bit about one of the most distinct features with a thunderstorm that includes of course the lightning so the lightning is attracted to tall objects that is part of the reason why it always hits the top of skyscrapers like the Empire State Building in New York City or the Needle over in uh, Seattle. It also will usually strike some of the tallest trees. And that is part of the reason why we always say when you're outdoors, don't stand outside. You should always go inside or if you have no place to go that's outside, maybe get under some sort of awning or something because you don't want to be the tallest object. So the reason why this happens is because of where the base of the cloud, where that lightning is coming from. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, but just so that you know, even if you are outside and you're under something and you think you're safe, in actuality, you may not be because lightning when it hits the ground, it can still electrify objects or anything that's around it up to 100 feet away. And that's why sometimes you'll notice the lightning will hit in one area and then it'll look like little fingers and whatnot that actually touched something else. Kind of also looks like the lightning has a hand, which is a whole other story. I know you're thinking crazy meteorologist, whatever. I think they do. So, Thunderstorms right now across the earth, there are about 2,000 of them happening right now. So the majority of thunderstorms in the United States happen in Florida, but they can happen in other places, all right? Venezuela is actually the number one country in the world that sees the thunderstorms. And just so that you know, thunderstorms usually happen during the spring and summer months. That does not mean that we can't see them during the winter. Uh, sometimes we have this thing called thunder snow, which is where you get a lot of snow uh, that is falling from the sky very, 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 very quickly. And then you also hear that thunder as well. It's actually pretty cool to see. We actually saw it a couple of times this past winter here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. All right. So what causes lightning? The short answer to this is we still don't know. There are a couple of theories that are out there but we still don't really know for sure what causes lightning and why would lightning hit your house versus somebody else's house even if they're the same heights they have the same features and whatnot now the best theory that's out there that we know of is as the precipitation right snow the hail as it forms very high up on the sky 
there's what we call charge separation, right? And what that basically means, that's a fancy way of saying we have negative particles and then we have positive particles. Think of like a battery. You know how one side has that little loop that, that kind of looks like a, uh, a little eye at the top and then the base of it is just flat? It's kind of like that, but with a cloud, you basically have positive and then negative on one side. And the thought and the thought behind this is as the hail or the rain actually starts hitting one another, it either becomes positively or negatively charged before it hits the ground. And hence why you have some sort of electricity that's way up high in the sky. So let's talk a little bit about how uh, this lightning forms in this theory, right? So remember I talked about those positive particles as well as those negative particles. So the positive particles tend to be at the top of the cloud, whereas the negative particles tend to be at the bottom, all right? And what happens is when we actually get the lightning, this is when you actually see the positive and the negative interact with one another. But usually what will happen is there are positive particles at, on the ground, right? Yes. Did you know that you are actually walking on uh, electric particles right now? Now, it usually will take something else to activate it. But yeah, you're doing it right now. It's just so small that you don't actually realize it. And in order to prove it to you, if you have carpet in your apartment, and don't do this right now, but if you have carpet in your apartment and you put on some socks and you go like this, what inevitably really happens if you walk up to a door or someone else? You can actually see the electricity. So much fun to do. Matter of fact, every now and then I do it to my wife. It's kind of funny. And then she goes, ah! And then, you know, <laughs> she gives me a very not so happy. <laughs> All right. So back to one. All right. So what happens is those negative particles that you see right there, eventually they will start making their way to the ground and slowly but surely they will actually connect with the particles that are on the ground. And what you'll notice is there's that little step leader that starts developing as a result. And that's pretty much how lightning forms. Now, sometimes this will actually happen in and in the middle of a cloud. So I don't want you to think that this always happens where you'll have positives and negatives in a cloud and then they just always go down to the ground. That's not true. So lightning is a very powerful and dangerous thing that Mother Nature is in charge of. So just so that you know, one lightning strike can be up to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That is five times hotter than the sun. All right. That is part of the reason why a lot of people, when they get struck by lightning, they go on to heaven or whatever. They don't survive. OK, so the other thing I want to let you know about lightning is it travels at about six thousand miles per second. Just to give you an idea of how fast that is, if you try and take a picture of lightning with your regular cell phone, usually you can't because it's moving that quickly. Light is moving that quickly. So by the time you see it with your eye and it sends that signal from your eye to your brain, to your finger to push the button, boom, it's gone. That's how quickly that lightning is moving. Now, the other thing I wanna let you know about lightning is this thing called a five second rule. All right, and no, it is not if you drop some food on the floor, you can pick it up within five seconds and still eat it, which by the way, that's gross. All right, so let's talk about this five second rule. So you can tell how far the center of a thunderstorm is just by counting to five several times. And what I mean by this is if you see lightning, you count how many seconds it is until you hear the thunder. Once you hear the thunder, you take that number, you divide it by five, and then voila, you know how far away that thunderstorm is. So let's do a quick math problem for those of you that have done division already. If I see lightning and then 15 seconds later I hear thunder, how far away is that storm? Well, if you answered three miles, you're correct. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the types of lightning. Now, most people, when they think of lightning, they're used to hearing about the lightning that goes from the cloud to the ground. That's the reason why we call it cloud to ground lightning. 
The other type of lightning that most people are familiar with is the lightning that kind of looks like fingers that are moving across the sky, right? That's what we call a cloud to cloud lightning. And just a quick reminder, all right, I'm only going to be reviewing three types of the most popular lightning, all right? I'm not gonna go into uh, details about there's all sorts of other types of lightning. I'm not getting into it. And that is uh, because this class is meant to be very basic. And if I start getting into all sorts of different lightnings, you're gonna end up getting confused. And because this is the first lesson where I'm teaching you guys about lightning, I just wanna keep it basic. All right, so cloud to ground, cloud to cloud, and then my favorite, which is ground to cloud. Yes, remember I had talked about the fact that you have electricity that you're walking on right now on the ground. There is, and it's been scientifically proven, where you sometimes will actually have lightning start out at the ground and go all the way up to the sky, similar to what's going on in this picture right there. All right, so I wanna let you know that sometimes when people look at lightning, they think, hey, it's all the same. And lightning is not all the same. There are two types of lightning, all right, that I wanna break down for you today. There's what we call positive lightning and then negative lightning. Most of the lightning that you will see throughout your life will be negative. Matter of fact, scientific studies have been done that have proven that about 95% of lightning is negative, all right? Now, this type of lightning can only strike up to several miles away. It usually is not as powerful as the positive lightning. Now, the positive lightning, sometimes you'll actually hear the lightning and it literally makes your house shake it is like boom okay that's usually a positive lightning strike but it only happens about five percent or less uh, of the time all right now usually you will see the positive charges uh they're transferred all the way down to the ground from the top of the cloud all right and again i don't really have time to go into how that all happens but that's usually where you'll see some of the most strongest lightning uh and usually you'll also see the entire sky light up it'll almost look like it's daylight for a split second now positive lightning strikes can strike up to 25 miles away and it is up to 10 times stronger than negative lightning and what i mean by stronger i'm talking about the power that is within that lightning strike all right so that is why we always say positive lightning Woo! Last thing I'm gonna talk about is actually detecting lightning. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that we do it. I'm just gonna review two of the most popular ones. Uh, the first one is what we call the National Lightning Detection Network or NLDN. And it is a company that actually partners with the military, various weather agencies around the country. And they have about a hundred different networks, a hundred different stations around the country. And their job is to figure out what's going on with the lightning, when it happens, and how strong that lightning strike was. Now, the cool part about this national network is it has a library of more than 2.5 billion lightning strikes. Is that not cool? So you can go back all the way to, I think it's the early, or I should say the late 80s, and you can figure out how much lightning has gone over one area versus another. The other way that we detect lightning is something called the Geostationary Lightning Mapper, all right, or the GLM. And that's just a fancy way of saying it's a satellite that's above space. It's a program that's actually run off of uh, one of the GO satellites. And from space, we can see the lightning. And we can use this information to issue warnings and watches. And we can also help pilots figure out how to navigate around it. And on this picture that's on the side of your screen here, you can actually see there in red what the lightning actually looks like. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I know. I love that stuff. I love watching all sorts of cool things from space. All right. So that's it. Hopefully you have learned something today. Our next class tomorrow, we will be talking about thunderstorm hazards. And what I mean by hazards, I'm talking about hail, tornadoes, as well as flash floods. They are all associated with thunderstorms and they are things that can really make life very difficult for a number of people. As always,
or questions, you can feel free to email me. Once again, the email address is jfrazer at wkyc.com, or you can feel free to tag me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, as well as Snapchat at Jason Fraser TV. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.